Good morning. We're going to look today at Isaiah 45 through 48. Uh, just 45 and 46 are assigned for today, but tomorrow is 47 through 49 and Monday 50 through 52. So we're going to get part of tomorrow's readings in today. Tomorrow is the third Sunday of October. We'll have Holy Communion at Mabel uh, at worship 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you join us from home, you're certainly welcome to have communion elements ready and, and join us for that as well. Um, in, in Isaiah 45, we, we find the call to Cyrus, Cyrus the Great, king of Persia. God calls this person, a non-Jew, to be the redeemer, to be the leader, to be the one who delivers the people of Israel from Babylon. And I mean, it's, uh, I mean, thus says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped. And, you know, as you, as we look on through uh, the rest of chapter 45, uh, you know, God says, I am the Lord, there is no other. Um, I will do what I will do for my people. And, you know, he, he, and he does. I mean, sometimes, you know, they can't, God can't use the people themselves to save themselves because they're just so stubborn in all of that. But, you know, he says, I'm going to, I'm going to use you, Cyrus, so that they may know from the rising of the sun that there is no one besides God. You know, God can use anyone to, to further his will. And he does. You know, and it's just, I mean, nobody is, is not good enough for God to use. I mean, sometimes, you know, you think about that and a little child shall lead them. You know, we hear that phrase, you know, talking about Jesus. And, and you know, when our children are so innocent and welcome, ready to learn. And, um, you know, children's sermons are, they take a lot of work because, you know, kids, kids are paying attention and you want to make sure that you don't misspeak then. And so often this is the way God speaks to his people as they are little children. And um, God is speaking to the, to the Israelites, you know, in verses nine and following. And, and it's, um, you know, he's, he's kind of saying to them, who are you to question my way? Who are you to question who, who it is that I will use? I have chosen to use Cyrus to free you. So don't turn your backs on me, you know, but the, the Israelites are, excuse me, having trouble seeing that Cyrus is working at God's direction. They, you know, they do anything and everything. It seems to, to ignore him. And verse 17 of Isaiah 45, Israel is saved by the Lord with everlasting salvation. He shall not be put to shame or confounded for all eternity. And so God is being faithful to his people. And then verse 23, you know, it's by myself I have sworn that my mouth has gone forth, a word shall not return. And then to me, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear, every tongue confess. And that's, you know, if you look, at Philippians 2, verses 9 and 10. I'll read those for you. Therefore, this is about Jesus, name above all names. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So here we have God saying, To me every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, and then we have Paul using those very similar words about Jesus in the New Testament when he's talking about Jesus, you know, that we will all confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. And, and um, this is where we get our, our promise and our salvation coming from God. Chapter 46 starts out talking about idols and how they are powerless and they're empty. And then, I mean, I wish I had underlined the word listen. As, you know, every time it comes up, you know, in Isaiah, because it, it's so often. Here we have that again, verse 3. Listen to me, O house of Judah. And then, you know, so there's a call to listen. And then the end of verse 4, the promise, I will carry and I will save. You know, and, and, and then God again asks, well, who can compare to me? You know, there's no one that can compare to God. And then verse 12 again, listen, you know. Listen to me, you stubborn of heart, you know? And, 
And I have got written in my Bible there, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, you know, listen to me, you know, why won't you listen? Have you ever, have you ever said that to your kids? Have your parents or your spouse ever said that to you? Will you just listen for once? You know, yeah, and this is God. I mean, you know, just, how, how can we be so stubborn? How can we be so thick-headed that, and I'm not talking about you and me in particular, because, I mean, we believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, but, but we still sin, we still go astray. But there are so many people in the world that ignore God, and dis, disavow Jesus as Lord and Savior. And um, so it, it's a, that, that call to, to come to God. In verse 10 of chapter 47, you feel secure in your whip, wickedness. You say, no one sees me. Ha, huh. you know, I mean, God knows who we are, what we do. And no matter what we do, I mean, it's, it's really hard to do something that no one is going to notice. Um, as we go on, um, You know, as we go on to get into to chapter 48, you know, that starts with, hear this, O house of Jacob. Again, you know, rather than the word listen, it's hear this. It's put your ears on, you know, open your ears and, and come, listen. Listen, O house of Jacob, all who are called by the name of Israel, who came forth from Judah, you know, who swear by the name of the Lord and invoke God, but aren't in truth and right. You know, they, they claim to know God, but they aren't following God. They aren't doing what God would have them do. Verse 4, he says, I know that you are obstinate and your neck is an iron sinew and your forehead is brass. You know, it's just, we're thick-headed, <laughs> thick-headed, you know, stiff neck, stubborn people. And, 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 and this is, I mean, he's talking especially to the Israelites, but because of so, because of their, their leaders and everything that they've done, but but we see it is so much today as well. You know that you would think that our leaders would would see the needs and act for the needs and for the the best well being. And this is what God does. I mean, He He sees our needs and He knows and He He did. He acted for our very well well best being when He sent Jesus into this Lord into this world rather. And and in verse 6, you know, it says, you have heard. Now see all of this. Verse 8, you have never heard. You have never known from your old. You know, so again, I mean, it, it's still kind of that that listening. You have heard. You have not heard. And uh, verse 12 again is that word. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, whom I called. I am he. I am the first. I am the last. You know, I am God. Listen to me. You know, can't you get it yet? You know, listen to me. I'm here for your own well-being. And that's what he says in verse 17. I am the Lord your God who teaches you for your own good. And we've probably all heard that too. Well, I, it's, it's for your own good, I'm telling you this. Or, you know, it's for your own good. And, and this is what God is. You know, in verse 18. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. You know, they, they ignored so much of what God said. You know, and the, you know, the first command, you know, thou shall have no other gods, is, you know, if we could all follow that, if we had no other gods, if we had nothing that we put ahead of God, you know, the world would be such a much better place. But, you know, we don't. We, we, we forget about things. We don't hold God as most important. And, you know, it's, we hold him as dear and near to us as we can, but we are sinful human beings and we can't we can't always follow the commandments a hundred percent and so god is uh reminding his people again you know oh that you had paid attention again a different phrase of listen to me and then in verse 20 and 21 um it's kind of that reminder of the exodus from from egypt where god led them and he said, you didn't thirst when you led through the deserts. He made water flow from the rock. He split the rock and the water gushed out. And, and so, you know, it, it's that reminder that God is faithful, that God provides. And even though it doesn't seem so often that God hears our prayers and knows our needs and provides for them, um, 
we have so many blessings and sometimes we're blinded to them by other things in life. But the reality is, is that God is for us.